Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, despite a leaked report, the health minister says the marijuana commission will not rush the process. After a school stabbing, a pastor is calling for more security measures to be put in place. Hurricane Dorian called a game changer. Brought to you by Alive. Best. Happy Majority Rule Day. Welcome to our news and thank you for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Weeks after the preliminary report from the Bahamas National Commission on Marijuana was leaked to the media, Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sand says the government will not rush the process. This as he slammed the leak, which he says has sparked premature debate over a report that has yet to be completed. Jasmine Brown reports. Dr. Sands was candid in his comments as he spoke extensively for the first time since the preliminary report was leaked. After several delays, the Marijuana Commission was expected to submit its final report to Cabinet this month. However, Sands said it is too early to reveal when a final report will be submitted or when potential policy changes would happen. We had set a target. We've clearly extended that date several times, and that's a Bahamian several. So the receipt of an official report is imminent. How imminent? I don't know the answer to that. Is that tomorrow, this week? I, I don't know. Sands insisted the marijuana issue is a serious topic that will take time to complete. Uh, this is a very important discussion, and I think it ought to, um, we ought, ought not to be sidetracked by discussions which have been predicated on information that ought not have been in the public domain to begin with. While some have accused the Minnesota administration of dragging its feet on the topic, the health minister was quick to shut down those talks. You know, I've heard that we, every single day that we delay, that there's some massive negative impact to the people of the Bahamas. I don't buy that. I think we ought to do it right so that we don't have to backtrack. Sands' comments came amid a national discussion on whether the government should move forward with the decriminalization of marijuana. Last month, our news team revealed that a preliminary report from the Bahamas National Commission on Marijuana proposes the expungement of all police records reflecting possessions of small amounts of cannabis. The report also recommends the legalization of medical marijuana and the decriminalization of the possession of up to one ounce of the substance. It also proposes individuals over 21 shouldn't be allowed to use use marijuana for recreational purposes and that anyone over 18 be allowed to use the substance for medical purposes. Zan said he understands why Bahamians are restless when it comes to the release of the final report. I don't believe that um, it is unreasonable for people to anxiously await the report. Uh, but I also don't believe it's unreasonable for the crafters, the writers, the commission to complete their work. Let them complete their work. They have worked very hard for many months. They have asked, let us, let us finish. I don't think it's unreasonable to let them finish. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. A local pastor is calling for stricter safety measures in public schools following a stabbing incident at a high school. Giorgio Bain reports. Following a triple stabbing at C.V. Bethel High School, pastor and youth advocate Dr. Carlos Reed is calling for more serious safety measures to be implemented in our schools before these already serious situations take a more drastic turn. The stabbing incident resulted in two young men being hospitalized and another being taken into police custody. Reed says his fear is that these violent situations will escalate. There's nothing that's preventing our schools from experiencing a caliban. When we look at America, and we see the amount of school shootings that they have experienced. Uh, we have not placed or put things in place to be able to prevent or to curtail something like that from happening in this country. Now, this young boy had a knife. Just imagine 
if it was a gun. Ahead of the 2017 general election, National Security Minister Marvin Dames promised to have metal detectors installed in public schools following another stabbing incident at Government High School. Those calls were reignited following the stabbing death of T.A. Thompson student Perry Roll last April. Reed said that's not all that needs to be done. However, he said the building structure of most public schools leaves students vulnerable to weapons. The way the schools are set up, the walls are so low that persons could go and they could throw weapons over the wall at night and evening and then they could be able to retrieve them in the day when they go to school. It's common now for young persons to be able to arm themselves with knives and ice pick and certain things to protect themselves. Reed, who is the author of The Bahamas Gang Culture, Proven Strategies for Change, says too many of these issues stem from gang affiliation. We have lost love. We have lost hope. So to them, the gang is a refuge for them. It's some place that no matter how stupid you are, you embrace. And you know what's amazing? These fellas are willing to put their life on the line for their gangs, but they wouldn't do it for their family. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie O'Bain. POP leader Philip Davis says Majority Rule Day was crucial to the professional development of Bahamians. Speaking to reporters during an inner city walkabout to recognize the holiday, Davis says a look back on history will show how far the country has come. Look into the yellow pages of 1967-68 and look under the rubrics of our professionals and see how many Bahamians were there. For example, look at architects, and you'll note that there may be but three architects, Bahamians. Look at the accountants, and you'll see but two. Look at the doctors, you may see but five. Look at the lawyers, you may see about 12. And then, take, and then, and then, take the yellow pages of 1992, when the Progressive Labour Party was voted out, and then compare and see the transformation Majority Rule Day recognizes the PLP's election victory in 1967, becoming the first majority black party to be elected to government. Davis identified himself as one of those Bahamians who was able to spread his wings after that historic moment. Persons like myself, who came from the underbelly of this society, reaching the heights that we're able to. And that is, you know, that, that reflection to me. It marks what majority rule means. It means that each, that we are not we, or not to be, and don't have to be limited by our circumstances. Once those who are in power and the policies of government release the shackles of oppression. Well, as Bahamians observe majority rule today, associate professor at the University of the Bahamas, Dr. Christopher Curry, says race is still an issue in the Bahamas and needs to be addressed. Bertrand McDermott reports. January 10th, 1967 was a defining date in Bahamian history. The Bahamas was presented with the opportunity for real democracy underlined by equality, tolerance, economic justice and social justice. However, 53 years later, associate professor at the University of the Bahamas, Dr. Christopher Curry says the issue of race and class remains a concern. Uh, things need to improve. Uh, and we need to address still some of the race issues that are lingering. Uh, I would argue that race is still an issue in the post-independence country of the Bahamas, but also class is another issue. And we still have a situation where uh, too many of the persons in our country that struggle to survive below uh, a quality standard of living are persons of color. And too few of the persons that own and operate the places of power are white uh, and so we have to address the inequalities and wealth inequality is sometimes a function of race as well. Still Curry said there are a number of achievements that Bahamians should be proud of. Well I think some of the successes we can see in some of the institutions that were established uh, from the College of the Bahamas of course now you be where I work 74 and then 79 the Defense Force established the Mortgage Corporation being established uh, National Insurance Board, um, all of these are successes, the Central Bank of the Bahamas as well. So we have institutional structures that have stood the test of time, so to speak, and are a function, I think, of uh, the majority rule era. Curry said he believes this is a seminal moment in the country's history, marking what he described as a second emancipation. In the 20th century, countries like the Bahamas um, had to fight, first of all, to throw off the shackles of colonialism. They also had to fight to, for the right to vote, 
universal suffrage. They had to fight for the right uh, to fair elections, and they had to fight for um, the the right to education and access to um, social services and the access to to things that were normally assumed to be given. And so our um, our whole society is being changed by majority rule, um, and civil rights are being afforded, and electoral changes and reform are occurring, and all of this is wound up in a a process and a journey that we call Majority Rule. Majority Rule Day became a national holiday in 2014. Along with Emancipation Day and Independence, Majority Rule is considered one of the most important events in the country's history. Reporting for our news, I'm Berthony McDermott. PLP Chairman Fred Mitchell dismissing claims that the former Prime Minister will seek to run in the next general election to reclaim his seat. Mitchell asserted if anyone seeks to run on the PLP's ticket, they must first complete the required module, regardless of who they are. I want to announce that the next module for persons who wish to run for public office in the Progressive Liberal Party will be from the 27th of February to the 1st of March. The 27th of February to the 1st of March. The cost is $120. And remember, if you wish to be a candidate for the Progressive Liberal Party, you cannot apply for that nomination unless and until you have done these, this module. Mitchell said people interested in running for the PLP have only been given the permission to canvass the constituency in which they are seeking. He said the decision is made by the candidates committee, which is chaired by the party's leader, Philip Davis. Mitchell said no decision on candidates has been made as yet. And no persons will be considered unless they have done that, of course, with the exception of the, those who are now incumbents, that is, members of the House of Assembly. There is a procedure for the nomination of candidates in the PLP. And PLP should familiarize themselves with this and not be informed by the Don Market rag how you get a point, how you get nominated for seats in the PLP. Still to come, a leading weather expert has called Hurricane Dorian a game changer. And a little later on, and a little later on, Dynamite Daisy to hit the stage tonight. Stay tuned. From TV to phone to fast internet, how can we show appreciation for the 25 years you've been with Rev? To celebrate our 25th birthday, Rev is rewarding 250 lucky customers with $250,000 cash back. Simply switch to Trio, upgrade to Trio, or pay your bill in full and have your chance to win cash this Christmas. Just call 601-8992 or email us at trio at CableBahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. Four months after Hurricane Dorian devastated the northern Bahamas, the Ministry of Health is set to replace the tents that currently house the public health care facilities in High Rock Grand Bahama with modular facilities. Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands says the handover ceremony will take place this weekend. On Saturday in Grand Bahama in High Rock, we will be uh, having uh, the presentation ceremony for the handover of the modular facility to replace the tent that has been servicing High Rock for a number of months post Dorian, as well as the new mobile uh, facility to service East Grand Bahama. A Ministry of Health situation report released in October revealed that the ministry has agreed on seven modular health clinics for Grand Bahama and the Abacos in the wake of the deadly storm. In addition to High Rock, facilities are proposed for Freetown in Grand Bahama. Over in Abaco, facilities are planned for Treasure Key, Hope Town, Guana Key, and Green Turtle Key. Sand says the modular clinics are much needed as those communities struggle to get back on track. We believe that this is a major step forward as we switch from tents to modular facilities and ultimately to, uh, to get to permanent structures. So we look forward to that event on Saturday, I believe at 12 noon. Well, a leading weather expert is calling Hurricane Dorian a game changer after the Category 5 storm defied predictions before slamming into the northern Bahamas last September. Meteorologist and author Wayne Neely says Dorian went against many of the early forecast predictions by increasing intensity to become one of the strongest named storms in history in just a matter of hours. The track forecast is pretty much accurate. We have that under, under, uh, under wraps. That, that's, that's not difficult for us to predict with the weather models. What's difficult to predict now is the intensity uh, from Hurricane Carrican. Hurricane Dorian went from a Category 1 to a Category 5 in almost record time. 
Hurricane Dorian delivered a devastating blow to two major islands, Grand Bahama and Abaco. Neely says Dorian stood because it was a giant, slow-moving storm that lingered for days, allowing it to quickly go from a tropical storm to major hurricane. He says with storms like Dorian now becoming the norm, it's clear climate change is a threat to the Bahamas. Because the weather models don't seem to have been in agreement with many th intensity forecasting. And that's continued to be the Achilles heel for uh, hurricane researchers in, the re in this region. In other news, the Junkanoo Corporation of New Providence appears pleased with how things played out for the Boxing Day and New Year's Day Junkanoo parades. JCNP Chairman Dion Miller said while there were some snags, the overall flow of both parades was better than previous years. The results were here, nearly here or there to me. Um, I was pleased with the process of yeah. the parades. Um, you know, we, we launched a new digital scoring platform. Um, it showed off very well. It was very successful. Um, we were able to get the scores and results out earlier, much earlier than anticipated. Um, so I was very pleased with that. And speaking of scores, there could be some changes to results next week if the select committee accepts the protests made by several groups on Monday and Tuesday. Penalties played a huge role in the Valley Boys' win on Boxing Day. Miller said that committee will meet and deliberate on Monday. I was pleased about the level of gaps, so we closed those gaps for the most part, so we need to keep improving. So there's a lot of aspects that I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of, but I still see there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of work for us to do going forward. Still to come, a doctor encouraging more men to get their prostate checked. Plus, Dynamite Davy to hit the stage tonight. Stay tuned. From TV to phone to fast internet, how can we show appreciation for the 25 years you've been with Rev? To celebrate our 25th birthday, Rev is rewarding 250 lucky customers with $250,000 cash back. Simply switch the trio, upgrade the trio, or pay your bill in full and have your chance to win cash this Christmas. Just call 601-8992 or email us at trio at CableBahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. Welcome back to our news. A local urologist is encouraging more Bahamian men to have their prostate checked. Dr. Gregory Pinto says while he understands the fear many men have of being diagnosed with prostate cancer, the earlier it is, caught the better. If we pick up prostate cancer early, it's one of the easiest cancers to treat. And we don't necessarily even need surgery. We can do something like brachytherapy. We can put low dose or high dose radioactive seeds into the prostate, kills only the prostate cancer cells, leaves the whole gland intact that'll have you cured. So if we pick up prostate cancer early, where it's low volume, early disease, your 10-year survival is as, as high as 99%. Very few cancers in this world you can say that. Prostate cancer is one of the leading causes of death in Bahamian men. Dr. Pinto said while many look at, the di look at the diagnosis as a death sentence, it doesn't have to be. In fact, we can pick it up so early that there's actually a treatment modality called active surveillance. So when we pick it up when the cancer is so clinically insignificant, we can surveil you for, in many cases, 8, 10, 12 years before we have to cure you. Local actress Therese Davis Nixon, also known as Miss Daisy, is coming together with church leaders to promote kindness. Davis says she will perform a random act of kindness each month this year. I am happy to announce that as of this month, say this month, Thank you very much. The pastors is asking you to do that all the time. Say this month. This Turn to your neighbor and say this month. Say da 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 this month. Yeah. As of this month, Daisy and Dynamite Productions Bishop Ross will do an ah and ah and ah an act of kindness every month for somebody in this nation. How we talking? How we talking? And we, we from yes, your heart. from my heart, we will do an act of kindness, whatever that act of kindness may be. And we will do that for somebody every and we're encouraging people. Davis Daisy explained what inspired her. I realized that it feels good to be, be, be given something. And since I know that I like, I don't like plenty of gifts and stuff, but I just like when people are nice to me. So I figured it's nice to be nice. 
So that's why we're doing this. We talk about brotherly love and brotherly kindness. So that's why I say, I got to do something new. When you go to pay for your grow, 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 grocery, I'm going to say, uh-uh, that, that's on me. And I can take out the card, give it to the people, as, as long as it come under $15. <laughs> And get this, following the recent ban on single-use plastics, Daisy said she also intends to give out bags. I have decided to have a new business. And this is my business. People, be, I'm gonna be in the food store yard giving out bags because these people don't have 25 cents to buy no bags, you understand? I don't, the other day I seen them coming over the, the, the grits, the grits on the head, this arm, the, the pampas under this arm, and the carrots sticking the hair, uh, and the celery coming from the hair. I said, what the devil is that? So I'm gonna be there to give out these bags. Great job, Daisy. Still to come, a look at the history of majority rule. Stay tuned. From TV to phone to fast internet, how can we show appreciation for the 25 years you've been with Rev? To celebrate our 25th birthday, Rev is rewarding 250 lucky customers with $250,000 cash back. Simply switch the trio, upgrade the trio, or pay your bill in full and have your chance to win cash this Christmas. Just call 601-8992 or email us at trio at CableBahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. You're watching our news. Welcome back. As the country observes Majority Rule Day, Jerome Sawyer takes a look at the significance of this day and what led to it. The formation of the Progressive Liberal Party in 1953 by three men who were near white or mulatto didn't give the early PLP much traction with the majority black population. In 1955, a caucus of black members produced a leader and a young Lyndon Pinley. By 1956, the mostly white United Bahamian Party was formed, establishing a two-party system. That year, six PLP members were elected to Parliament. Over the next six years, the PLP gained popular support with major legislative victories like universal suffrage, giving every Bahamian over 18 the right to vote. Despite women going to the polls for the first time, the PLP was only able to get eight seats in Parliament in the 1962 election. The next five years, though, were crucial. 1964 ushered in self-governance. The colony of the Bahamas got its first cabinet and premier in Roland Simonet. The stage was now set for majority rule. As the 1967 general elections drew near, the UBP's grip on power slackened. A rash of bad publicity over a Freeport gambling license and growing discontent with the mercantile elite who ran the country made the party's downfall almost imminent. The 1964 constitutional talks gave New Providence five additional seats, universal adult suffrage of one vote per person and the abolition of the company vote had leveled the playing field. At the close of the polls on January 10, 1967, the PLP and the UBP were tied with 18 seats each. Randall Fox, the Labour Movement candidate, and Alvin Brennan, an independent candidate, were the deciding seats. Pinley flew from Andros to Nassau and convinced Fox to join forces with the PLP in return for a cabinet seat as Labour minister. He would offer Brennan Speaker of the House. After a decade of struggle, on January 10, 1967, the Progressive Liberal Party would run one of the closest elections in history and emerge victorious. For the first time, black Bahamians would run their own affairs. Reporting for our news, I'm Jerome Sawyer.